Uh, hello, welcome to the Painterly Podcast, the arts podcast by artists for artists. Uh, I'm here today with Ryan Humphrey, perhaps better known as with pencil in hand. Um, and we're going to talk about erotica today. So uh, hi, dear children. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, Ryan uh, was born in West London uh, and is an illustrator based in Lincolnshire. Uh, he has a BA in fine art and an MA in illustration and works with any subject matter that's pop culture and internet based, um, but a lot of a lot of dirty images. So oh, yeah. that's what we're going to talk about today. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm pretty good. I mean, I've been looking forward to doing this kind of talk. It's I think it's just it's just nice to kind of talk about my artwork and stuff and just to kind of explain what I do and um yeah just pretty much that really oh well I'm, I'm really pleased to have you I was really excited about it um long time fan um I was actually now, no I was, now I'm blushing <laughs> <laughs> I was gloating about it to um Laura Ryan who I share my studio with and mm. um you know I was kind of bragging about like getting you on the pod and <laughs> And oh, then man. she she revealed that she's already done a, an interview with you um, oh. <laughs> as part of Draw Brighton. And I was like, yeah. oh, OK. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, was it Jake? Because I went to the same uni as him. That's because he was a few. He's about, I think, like three years older than me. And so, yeah, he kind of I did like a talk with him at his um, drawing studio in Brighton years ago. And it was really fun because we were just talking about the process of like sketchbooks and stuff, the kind of importance of using them. Oh, and how nice. they kind of frowned upon in like education at the time so it was really fun actually it was pretty oh. fun well it's stolen my thunder a little bit but i'm glad <laughs> it was good <laughs> um why don't you tell people who might not be familiar with our work uh, your work not our work uh your work a little bit about what it is you do um yeah um what do i do um Oh boy, where do I begin? I mean, I predominantly do drawings and sketchbooks. Uh, I used to do portraiture. I still do, but I don't do it as much. But I mean, when, they, when you ask me to do a bio about me and about my work, it's always weird because I never read like talking about myself and what I do. I just let the drawings kind of explain everything. Mm. And so I just kind of draw whatever I find on the internet. It's pretty much as simple as that. I mean, as I said before in the bio about doing fine art and stuff, I was talking about that like, because the theory of things of why you make the work. And I was always kind of struggling in the past thinking why I make the work that I do. And to kind of boil it down, it's because I just like it. That's so I just, I, I, I just see images online that I think look really good um, from erotic images to like sex, to um, portraits, to film means and I just feel like yep I just want to draw that and that's it pretty much that's Perfect. I mean that's the work I kind of do I just mainly doing pencils coloring pencils I used to be a painter and I was really shit so I kind of stopped doing that and um, just focused more on drawing side of things with line work and I've been drawing since oh god boy for years maybe 2006 because that's when I did a foundation course in Epsom in UCA <laughs> And I did that for a year. Then I did my BA in Farnham, UCA Farnham. And I was, as I said, don't work in painting. And I used to do paintings of like um, landscapes, kind of like Peter Doig, kind of like a real shit Peter Doig. <laughs> I was oh, awful, awful. And then I kind of figured out at the end of that, um, what the hell did I want to do? Like I wanted to do an MA, either in painting, drawing. Illustration was never on the cards, but I had a tutor at the time. Um, his name is Jonathan Parsons, who was an artist who was really good because he was honest. And he's, I remember I remember being in my studio and he said to me, look, your paintings aren't that great. You should really focus on drawing. And I thought, you're so fucking honest. And I love that. Mm. So I missed, I was looking in the other unis to go to because I was looking at um, Wimbledon to do an MA there. And I just missed the window for that. And so I, I just looked into Camberwell. And I went to an opening day in that. It was really snowy. I remember that because I nearly fell over. And I fell in love straight away. The whole vibe, the whole everything. And I missed it. I missed applying for it. So I took a year out. I had a gap year. And I distinctively set myself a goal of drawing anything but drawing. And I remember being drawn intensively for about six months, for about eight hours a day, for about five days a week. 
wow. just to, to kind of get better. And so then I applied for that and I did a year of that. And I graduated in 2012 and I absolutely fell in love and I thought illustration is what I, is for me. And I've just been drawing ever since. So that's pretty much it, really. Yeah, I remember, I, I think I was on Twitter and you, you posted about the, the change in your style and how people comment on this a lot. And you used to do yeah. these really complex overlapping drawings yeah. with just like many many facets and and yeah. it's really paired back now it's it's really simple color blocking and and um yeah you have a really immediately recognizable style and i yeah. I, I was gonna ask why the change um I, I read a little bit about it but i'd love to hear from you yeah i think i think the thing is with changing stuff i feel like it's this Drawing, and I think just making artwork in general, it's it's a pro it's a process and a progress that you never really retire from. And I feel like sometimes you don't want to be just doing the same thing the whole time. Mm. I think it, it, it you take ages to kind of find a way of enjoy making work. I think that's one of the first struggles is loving what you do. And I think once you kind of figure that out, you can kind of the world is your oyster to a degree. And I remember like in specific time periods in my life in certain years where as you were saying like I did overlaying of drawings I did very hyper realistic surreal drawings and kind of like collage bases and I kind of move on from that from time to time and I feel like the changes are kind of a natural way of just improving improving myself and just kind of freshening things up because mm. I think one of the easiest things of like making work and artwork is you don't only become stale in yourself you want to kind of be fresh you want to be kind of new and i think it's always fun to kind of do new things i think like i found a way of drawing of it in a way like pot luck or just using like the red and blue pencils like these ones this the koei nor ones and just remember finding them and thinking that they're great i'm going to use them and it seems like now these last about like, probably two years i'd say that i've been predominantly using them more and there's a way of working that i do now where my style is I always hate that word style that's always a, it's always a weird kind of phrase for me but I well, I found a way of working where it works and the subject matter that I'm doing the kind of freedom the looseness of line because before as you were saying like my drawings were very detailed very shading very tonal very much like layers and layers and layers and I feel like now as I've gotten older I've kind of stepped away from that a little bit and just focused on linear line work and kind of shapes and form mm. so yeah i just think the change i change is just, just a natural thing i feel for any artist and i think at least me personally you know as you mature you stop fighting it i think, yeah. I think we have an idea of what we want to be and yeah. and who we want to emulate and then if it doesn't come naturally there comes a certain point where you can either you know continue trying to to bind yourself into the right shape of an artist or you just let go and you think actually this I'm going to go with you know the path of least resistance the thing that comes naturally to me and, and usually that's the better thing um, yeah I think that's the thing like I've I never have had students um whenever I've like talked to students or spoken to students so I have other people talk to me about like how do I get better how do I get better myself I'm always struggling for perfection I'm always doing this I, it's easy to say it, but I always just say to you, just got to let go. I think, fuck it. Yeah. And just not feel that pressure. Because I think, as you were saying, it's like you kind of, when you're younger and like when you're a student and when you're learning to make work, you 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 have this stress already to you because you kind of look at other artwork and you want to do that. You want to kind of be detailed. You want to have a way of working where it just looks so natural. And I feel like sometimes you put so much pressure on yourself to do that, that it stops you. And I think, as you said, when you kind of mature, you, you get some people that are very good, very young, and that's just life. But I feel like for the majority of people, it take years and years to just to really accept what you do and let go and just have fun as you get older. And you just think, you know what? It doesn't matter. It does yeah. not matter about if it looks wrong. You just go with the flow. And sometimes you do the best work from that really like speed just being fast and quick and just having fun and I think allowing for and accepting a certain level of distance between what you enjoy in your private yeah. life as a viewer and what you produce mm. um I, I think you know I thought that I had to in order to like what I paint I had to produce something that 
what I'm drawn to in an other artist. And then I, I came to the conclusion, oh, well, I'm just never going to like what I pay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. I think that's the thing. I think sometimes uh, I even say to other people and to myself that most of the work that I do, I don't particularly enjoy it that much. Mm. It, it's it, That might seem really strange, but for me, it's just the process, the process of doing it. For once you put paper onto pencil, like pencil onto paper, sorry, and you just, I start making what I see, the image that I kind of reproduce to my own way. I love that more than the actual final outcome. I just get the buzz of the middle rather than the end product. It, yeah. it's, 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 such a, it's such a funny feeling sometimes because I've produced so many, so many drawings and stuff. And so many, like at the moment, I'm, I'm talking to another artist and about a, a possible exhibition. I haven't done exhibition work for years. Um, and just kind of looking at what work to choose. And it's such a fucking drag to just pick and be like, oh God, what do I want? And having like specific subject themes for the show, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And I'm just looking at all this work and I'm thinking, oh God, I hate all of it. It's all crap. It's all shit. And having like a little mini breakdown. But yeah, it's just, it's just a funny old world it is like making my work. Yeah. I remember um, I was trying, I was really trying to hone this style of like loose, you know, mm. um, blocky shapes. And I, I did this, cow this really large scale cow or bull <laughs> i guess and and i posted it into the group chat and i was like i think i don't i don't hate this for once and <laughs> and, and alex will be um yeah. you know alex yeah, um yeah, yeah. just goes give it time yeah. <laughs> yeah. and sure enough like weeks <laughs> later i was like oh this i hate this this sucks yeah. Uh, yeah and i feel like sometimes i think it's good to hate your own work sometimes yeah I think, I think it's good I think it's really good sometimes you have this kind of perception I feel like you have to love everything you do yeah. everything has to be fucking perfect and actually no oh I could look at drawings now and be like what the fuck did I do there <laughs> it's it's funny it's really funny it is and I feel like going off of like a complete tangent because I think now with like social media you look at drawings and you, or you look at artwork and you post them online as you kind of saying like of Alex and stuff, you put them in chats and you put them online. You might think they're crap, but other people would then time to like them. And then there's like a whole other kettle of fish of it, or having like an audience looking at what like what they like of your work and kind of targeting that audience and thinking, mm. oh shit, now I've got to cater to that. Am I going to do well for this? Should I focus on this stuff? Yada 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 yada. And it's like, oh for fuck's sake, it's just never ending. Well, I was going to say, actually, you're one of the most wildly popular artists <laughs> on Instagram. Oh, um, no. You've, you've got loads of followers. And, and so no. <laughs> does that does that add pressure? Does that stress you out? Um, or is it nice? Is it affirming? It's a bit of both, really. Yeah. I think the thing is, it's, I think in a lot of senses with like social media stuff, I think it's luck, a lot mm. of it. A lot of it's perfect timing. And I think the boom I've noticed with social media, with Instagram, in a sense, was during the pandemic, during the first lockdown, because no one went outside, everyone stayed indoors. And I feel like that was kind of like lightning in a bottle for myself, per se, because I just kind of focus, focus, making work because everyone was online. There was so much stuff people do online, posting content, doing this. It was a great chance of kind of talking to other artists, like with Alex, like with Kenyo. I mean, that whole kind of social, like, presence online of, like, creators being together, like, the group chats and Telegram and all of that, it was such a wow thing. And I think it it was kind of daunting just to kind of see the followers grow and that. And I think it still kind of affects me here and there because you're going to get people send you messages, like, especially, we will probably talk about, like, all the erotic stuff, and especially recently now with trans, like, submissions I do get which is wonderful. It's an absolutely lovely thing to do. You, I'll get people like they will send abuse, they'll send that transphobic stuff, or people will send me stuff that's unsolicited, which really irritates me. That irritates me completely because it's the kind of presumption that the fact that if you do a to art book, that you see tits and arse all the time, here you go, I have a picture of it, it's going to be fine. And it just really irritates me. There's a kind of level of disrespect. Yeah. If that make like that makes sense, it's just really irritating. So you get followers like that, you, and and I think as well you kind of we were going before that 
I've been doing this. I've been actively posting drawings online since 2010. And I feel like the problem is with like Instagram now, like you post a piece of work on there. Viewers think that's you now. They mm. don't look at the past. They don't kind of see the progression. They don't see who you was as an artist and as a person, <clears throat> excuse me, years gone by. And I think sometimes people kind of find that surprising and amazing. Like when I recently did the Fingstons, my recent book project, and I put on the tagline from the creator of Barkira, someone left a message saying, oh, you made that. It's like, yes, I did. And like, <laughs> if you look far back, you kind of be like, I did portraits as well and all this other shit drawings. Please look at my past stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I was actually shocked uh, that you saw my message when I messaged your Instagram because I just assumed that you're constantly inundated with uh, messages and, and pictures. It, um... it can be, it can be. And it, it's 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 hard. I mean, I, during like the first, I keep going back to like the pandemic, it seems like that's the beginning of everything. But like, I remember I was doing redraws. Like I did like the, my Doom book, sketchbooks, and now people were like loving them and people were kind of saying, oh, can I buy that? Can I have an original? And I'd be like, no, I do work in sketchbooks. I don't want to rip the fucking pages out. Right. It pisses me off. And so I did that kind of notion of like, look, I'll just redraw it and you pay whatever you want. It does not bother me. Yeah. And that was really fun to do and really stressful because I got bombarded with messages every day. Like, oh, can I have this? Oh, can I have this? So I'd be kind of in my spare room during the same image like 20 times. And it was always kind of fascinating to see what, as we was going back to before, I kind of alluded to the fact that what people wanted a drawing of, what was kind of deemed successful online. Mm. And it was always usually drawings of men's asses <laughs> that, that people wanted. Uh, there was one, I think there was the, one of the main popular drawings. It was like a masculine torso and the hands were going down and you can kind of see like the pubic hair. Right. And I was like love hearts around it. It was something like that. And I drew that like 50 times. I even had to close my eyes and be like, yeah, I know what I'm fucking doing it. It's like everyone just wants to see that pubes. And I was like, yeah, great. This is fun. So well, I mean, that's yeah. a that's a popular theme throughout, you know, even yeah. classics. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's just, yeah. It's just I think of uh, Perseus with Medusa's head and he's got that yeah. really, really firm buttocks. Yeah, uh... yeah. It's like they put, you see like close ups, it's like all marble statues and stuff like that. We kind of see like the human form and just like these kind of perfect shapes and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, I can see why people want this on their wall. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, yeah, yeah the, the human mm. form is, is stunning or it can be. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... Uh, I don't necessarily agree about the, my own body, but you know that's a whole, uh, <laughs> whole other thing. Oh, um, the club, bloody hell. Yeah, I remember doing the pa- ba- back to the pandemic. Um, yep. Here we I, go. Here we go. I I had a long distance paramour because it didn't really matter if they were down the street or you know <laughs> ages yeah. away, um, and I wanted to send them. Um, this, there was this girl, and I can't remember her name. It was Kate something, and I feel really bad. I think her Instagram handle was Draws Nudes. Oh yeah. Um, and I I couldn't find it when I looked for it today. Um, I think she might have deactivated, but I had her draw one of my nudes to send to him. And um, yeah, I remember her saying the same thing. I you know I was very cautious about like when are you okay with me sending the reference image? Yeah. Where should I send it to? Yeah. And I she said nobody gave her that consideration really and it, yeah. her inbox was just inundated with men sending yeah. photos and I, I i felt really terrible for for her yeah um, no I can, I can understand that kind of feeling because I feel it, like, yeah so i was gonna say because i feel like um especially like online stuff that kind of accessibility of just anyone can get anything and send anything and it just it's just like a real it's always a gray area and especially when you're dealing with nude people yeah, nude photos and stuff like that, and there's this element of trust as yeah. well. It's 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 a real, oof, you know. And and even when I've done more erotic stuff, which we'll we'll get into, but um, mm. I've definitely noticed I get lots of sort of commissions, you know, yeah. um, and and people wanting to send me photos, and and then um, I feel bad because on the one hand I want the money, and on the other hand, <laughs> and, and and on the other hand it's so hard to find references. Yes. Um, so I'm mm, like, maybe I, I should, but then I don't like the vibe and it's, it's, you know, it's yeah, difficult. It, it is. And I think it's, as I was saying, it's definitely a trust thing. And I feel like 
it's that's why I love drawing trans people. Mm. I especially now because I've noticed the fact that I've had people send me stuff and send me images, and they're all great. Now I get I get photos where the quality is like something from like a Nokia thirty two ten. It's terrible, and I love it because I, I don't care because it gives a kind of a sense of charm. But what I've kind of noticed, especially with more of the trans people, that when I draw them, is the fact that they feel more comfortable now in their new bodies, mm. and they pose in a way which is like they feel comfortable they feel safe and i get like messages most of the time saying that oh you know you're drawing like the way you represent trans men or women in a way which it's not sexual it's not like degrading it's it's normal it's a naturalness i was gonna say i when i was looking through and i, I was thinking about all the the trans bodies you depict in a way that we just don't normally mm -hmm. get to see them um the word that came to mind was factual like it was just yeah. factual this is this is what it is um yeah. and and it felt yes it's a hyper sexualized image in some ways but in, in other ways it's not in the way that trans people are usually depicted as like yeah. Yeah. um as you know sort of i feel like our only sort of media depictions of of trans people are either as you know sex workers or yeah. um pitiful creatures in like a yeah. you know dateline episode yeah. or something and and, <laughs> yeah. and and so it's so refreshing just to see them amongst your other works no different yeah. from you know just completely yeah um situated naturally within um, yeah yeah it's as it's there's a as we were saying before it's a good source of references as well i mean the poses themselves are really good but i just kind of like to draw any kind of body shape and then any gender really there's nothing really kind of stopping me and i feel like doing the kind of submissions and just drawing people in general it's it's challenging yourself again it's kind of like looking at subjects that you probably wouldn't necessarily do in a sense because i feel like i've had people who's like say to me like they, they hardly see trans people being drawn mm. it's like that you don't very rarely see like new trans people drawn you know in like in any kind of forms and it's just kind of nice the fact that it challenges me because i feel like i don't know how i'm gonna word this in a, in a way that's kind of like it pushes like the sense of subjects like you can draw anything and like you don't have to feel kind of um intimidated like uh yeah, it, it is really, it's kind of really hard to kind of describe this. It's kind of, I don't want to word this. Uh, I get lost in my way of the thought here. Yeah. Um, trying to think. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting stuck now. That's okay. <laughs> I, I think the thing that comes to my mind when I see them is I can I can just tell that it's a real honor for you to yeah. be able to to do That's this. Yeah. And, and and I can sense there's like a, an element of, of not duty but uh just like I, I can tell that you 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 recognize the yeah, the weight yeah. of what you're doing which i think yeah. is yeah really it beautiful. Does. yeah and i feel like from in the subject side of things it's like i'm comfortable drawing whatever nothing offends me nothing shocks mm. me and i feel like being like a white male artist like cis all of that it's just it's kind of the kind of um subject matter you feel like oh he's drawing a white man he's drawing women naked mm. women boring how objectifying how this and then i kind of feel like well oh, actually i'm drawing any anyone That's and nice. a lot of the stuff that i draw a lot of the figures that i draw because i've had people say to me do you draw from pornography and no i don't because really? it's just no no not at all I mean, most of the, some of the images I look at on Tumblr because that's my that's my hidden shame, my secret source is Tumblr. <laughs> I mean, I still got my account and all that stuff. But I, I use I tend to look for more like the kind of erotic imagery or stuff that's mm. not showing too much because I kind of like the poses where they're very suggestive, but they're not they're not in your face. Yeah. There's not it's not there's not an obviousness because I was looking at one of the questions I believe and it says I mentioned about like pornography and stuff like that. And like, how do I defer the subjects themselves? And I always feel like pornography, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Be it fuck, be that what they, they at me. But it's more about like the pornography, it's very much you see the close-ups of like 
like with the dicks and all that stuff. You see close ups. There's never too much emotion I feel being shown. It's very kind of there's an obviousness. It's that it is what it is. Yeah. You've seen penetration, you've seen all that. Whereas when I draw like erotic imagery and stuff like that, I tend to look draw into kind of like the bodies together where you're not seeing it, where it looks like there's been sex, but there's a there could be sexual acts being performed, this thing ever where it kind of plays on your mind or what's going on. And I yeah. love that. I find that I find that more engaging. Like for me personally, now now like the gloves are off. I find when I draw people kissing, I find that to be more erotic. That to me is such a more erotic kind of imagery to work from than like straight up people fucking. Well, I think kissing is something I've noticed has kind of been robbed from sexual imagery you know yeah. particularly in the only fans age where it, it's yeah. usually a, a quote-unquote collaboration where yeah, you yeah. know it's two strangers and they're probably not going to kiss yeah um, yeah that's a good point actually yeah, kissing really point. kissing has become quite like a erotically charged mm. um act now uh the other thing i was going to pick up on is in preparation for this i was watching some art history lectures on french libertinism uh, and and that style of of erotic drawings and and etchings, mm-hmm. um, and I noticed that there's always clothing. Um, in it, it, it was most popular for that you know trousers to be dropped around you know the the waist, but still present. Um, and it was very rare that you would see completely naked uh, bodies, mm-hmm. or you know there'd be a night a nightgown that's lifted, um, yeah. and 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 that adds something really. Um, enriching yeah. to it because i think i think it gives a like a slice of life um and and, and it, it feels more in the moment and and uh yeah it, it just adds something to it so it's interesting it, it, that you say you prefer having the clothing yeah it, it just feels more natural it feels like more like the kind of the lead up towards intimacy with clothes on the sense of kissing the stuff like that usually it's kind of like a strange example, but it's like a sandwich. You've got like two bits of bread in the middle. The middle is like the actual having sex. You've got like people kissing, taking clothes off, and then they've got the aftermath of just laying in bed together. Mm. I prefer the two slices of bread to kind of <laughs> draw, to draw them. Like for me, like kissing was going to back before that. I felt like whenever you draw close-ups of people kissing, I love the fact that you can't tell who they are or if they're both male, male or female, none of that. Mm. It's nice for like this, this, the kind of consumer, but like the viewer to look at that and kind of see what, who, they, who they are. Because there's always this problem, I always feel sometimes with artwork, of drawing people in general, portraits, this, that, and the other. Like if you could recognize, if you see the person, if it's like, oh, that's a man or that's so-and-so, it, it takes away the this, this sense of thinking about what it could be. When you're mm. given the answer, I always tend to prefer drawing stuff where the answer isn't given to you. You have to bring the answer. It's it's very much kind of like a like a surrealist kind of cubist approach to things. Like, what is it? What could this be? And I've always loved that fact. It's like you, it can be whatever the fuck you want to be. If you think <laughs> that's that's like two men, great, whatever. And I've had I've had comments say to me like, oh oh, are they two men? Oh, are they trans? I'm like, I I I don't know. You tell me. It's, it, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. <laughs> I really do not care. As long, as long as you're looking at it, it's making you think. That's half the fucking work done for my. Album. That's interesting. Yeah, I think I, I lately I've been coming from a very different um, perspective where I'm, I'm I'm kind of getting into narrative art and religious yeah. art, and and so Ooh. I nice. there is an answer. Like there's a story yeah. that I want you to be able to pick up. But what yeah. I've I've been noticing is people don't know the stories anymore people don't That's like people point. and and so there That's is an point. ambiguity but that i haven't necessarily accounted for in the yeah. general public um so yeah, that's a good that's a good point especially like now i feel like like religious art kind of think of Pete tangent i feel like you don't really see much of it being being made or created no. in a sense i mean the last kind of Oh boy, the last kind of religious art I could say I've probably seen is I remember going to the Saatchi Gallery a, a decade ago and they, they were kind of predominantly picking art being made in like the Middle East. And I think they had some stuff there that was quite religious art based around Islam and stuff like that, I think. And they had stuff from like China. 
I remember looking at stuff like that, but I don't, we can't really seem to recall anything now of like a modernized Western approach of art in religion. The best but, example I can think of, and this is actually going to marry the two subjects, um, is I had a very dear friend who will have a very dear friend who uh, was a professor at um, Balliol College in Oxford. And he secured, I, I might get the story wrong but I think he secured this um I think it was a photograph that was sort of meant to be Joan of Arc and it was it was all the sort of you know associated some symbolism of Joan of Arc but the the main figure was in bondage gear oh wow um and I thought it was somehow he managed to get it into Balliol College in their canteen and it was just hung there (laughs) um and it it was incredibly erotic and also like beautiful and and sort of evoking classical religious art in a, in a really fun new way yeah. um so yeah it, it exists cool. somewhere i think yeah, that's pretty <laughs> sick i mean I, i'd love to get back into doing stuff like that like i think you, there's always subjects and kind of mediums that you do want to try out for yourself and they're all kind of well shapes of life and sometimes you feel like there's not enough time yeah. there's not enough time to do everything you know, I, like I kind of said before that I don't feel like I'll draw erotic work forever. I feel like sometimes it can get quite stale in myself. And I think sometimes that is a problem when you're dealing with kind of eroticism and kind of sex at work because it's just everywhere. It's mm-hmm. just you, you try and do something new with it to a degree. And sometimes I get like stuck in a rut and be like, what can I do that's different? What can I do that's new? And I think the problem, like going back to before about like social media, is the fact that there is that kind of notion that once you stop doing something that's very popular and does sell well and people can relate to, I feel like sometimes when you stop doing that, people just kind of evaporate and disappear. They feel like, oh, we shit. Oh, he doesn't do it anymore. He's he's drawing plants. It's like, oh, great. Oh, boring. Unfollow, unsubscribe. I definitely had that. I, I when I started out painting, yeah. I um I, I think quite cynically, like for the wrong reasons. It sounds like you do it for the right reasons, but I quite <laughs> I quite cynically got into sort of very erotic drawings of um sort of Sheila esque um twinks. Uh and nice. and I got instant you know praise and, and and positive feedback and and sales on things that I, sh- I had no business selling they were terrible <laughs> just utter garbage but I sold them and, and and you know I could feel myself getting into a bit of a feedback loop and yeah. and really you know wanting more of that but it was empty and I knew I actually needed to paint more complex things yeah. and learn the basics of painting before you know these these shitty little ink drawings got out there and and I could also just like tell like I'm engaging the wrong part of the viewer's brain I think yeah no, um, I can get that I can get that and and it felt horrible and I've I've I've, I've noticed I, I get you know I try not to be a jealous person like I, I mm-hmm. don't think I don't think it's a zero-sum game in terms of audiences and and um success and and I I really don't have much of that impulse but the times I do are when I see a terrible painting or a terrible drawing from like a quote-unquote queer artist where it's just like you know I think the meme is like five otters in pink underwear with like a little bit of mascara on and and that (laughs) kind of does rile me up a bit because I'm like you're passing something off as art that is actually just something else I, I i don't know it gets back to that question of what's erotica what's pornography yeah and no what's... no i get that i totally get that i feel like maybe that kind of alludes back to doing like trans drawings and stuff it's like i try and draw them as real as i can mm. i don't try and do them as like knockoffs or like really kind of disservice the subject matter in itself i always tend to look at it and be like right i'm going to try and approach this kind of subject in a way that's very serious and like sensual but soft and it's like it just i never see it online i never yeah. see people like do trans art or when i have when i have seen people have done it it's always been 
fine for me to look at and fine for me to be like, yeah, that's great. Do more of it. Fucking hell. Let's do everything. I hate it when people sometimes, I think this is what I was trying to, when I was struggling before in our conversation. I always hate it when people feel like they, they don't feel right doing the subject. Like sometimes they feel like, not like a strong way, like disgusted of like subject matter, but I feel like you, you, you could do whatever you want. Why are you disgusted? And mm. something like doing something like this, like that, that, that really pisses me off. That pisses me off the fact that you kind of limit yourself to a certain subject. Like when I was, when I was a student, when I was doing my BA fine art stuff, I mean, I can hold, put my hand on my heart and say to you now that I made work back then, which was very kind of misogynistic, very mm. kind of the subject matter was very obvious of like women as objects. Because I felt like back in the time, you could do that in fine art. You can kind of do subjects and be like, oh, I, I'm doing fine art. I could do whatever the fuck I want. Blah, 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 blah. King of the castle here. But I felt like I could do that because, you know, a white male doing mm. shit like that. And I think, as we were saying before, the older you get, the more mature you get. You realize that, one, when you're like a teenager making artwork, you're such a fucking idiot. You're doing stuff <laughs> like that. You have no sense of like what's going on. And I think like too, you just get older and just realize to yourself that nah, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to kind of make work that offends or does that because I'm constantly thinking of that every time. And especially yeah. especially now of like people say X, but Twitter, like everyone's opinions, everyone's got this, everyone has that of what's online and just trying to cater to audiences on online of making artwork and trying not to offend, trying to do stuff like that. I mean, I've made, I've, whenever I've done work, people have been offended. I've had awful comments. I've had people say bad things about me. I think I have had a death threat once. Really? I think I, I, think I have. I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's, I it was, I usually get most of the comments, of course, because people are fucking knobheads, is whenever I draw trans. And you right. always get the odd people saying, oh, it's disgusting. I'm like, here we go. Oh, one's at the fucking woodworks here. And mm. I, I, and for me, when people come out and say horrible, horrible transphobic stuff of my drawings, I'm always like, yeah, you're a fucking knobhead. You've just announced yourself to all these followers that you have an opinion, which is absolutely garbage. Mm. And why would you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> why the fuck would you want to do it if you don't like for me if i don't like any artwork or stuff online artwork them talking about artwork and stuff i don't i, I will not say to the artist who could do creative no oh, it's shit never yeah. do that i find that absolutely shocking so but yeah it's just internet social media everything like that's always weird <laughs> well just... it brings out the worst in people it, myself it included really you know yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um well you've raised a couple of points i want to follow up on but i'll yeah, start with sure. um you know i think oh gosh i've gone really dark i don't know why it's, it's um, raining here. It's, it's awesome. english <laughs> um, weather love it english weather um i was gonna say i think i so recently i did some some dicks um, I had this idea for like an exhibition that was all I was doing fish for a while um, fish on ice and then I was I, I started doing I, they, they started looking very phallic to me um, oh. and and I, I sort of had this this marrying of of you know the the wet slick uh, phallic shape of the dead fish and then sort of semi-erect to soft penises um, and and sort of the the juxtaposition of them in my head and so I wanted to to do a um an exhibition where they were both there called wet market I never got around to it because <laughs> um I started doing all these dick paintings and then I realized you know I I teach painting for beginners on on uh on the side and I they go through my Instagram and I was thinking oh gosh I really can't <laughs> you know have all these sort of normie ladies who I mean, I mean that's not like a pejorative I love normies yeah. like I'm a normie at heart I wish I could be a normie I'm just too weird um, <laughs> but you know like I might be turning off potential customers from you know yeah. my my bread and butter you know, <laughs> way of making a living 
uh, so check, check out their these. yeah check out their Instagram. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> my own housemate had to like mute me. <laughs> oh my god! It's like I felt where where I work because, I mean, my job I'm a delivery driver, and so and there are people who say to me, "Oh, what do you do like outside of this?" And I'm like, "Oh, I have a shop." I'm like this kind of like nudging at the collar, thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh, what do you sell? And like books and stuff like that, and sometimes prints. And like, oh, what what kind of work do you sell? I'm like, uh, uh stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 always kind of a conversation thing. It's like my parents, like my dad, he's where he works and stuff. Like people have asked him about what I do. He doesn't give a shit. He's really? like, hey, he does this. He draws fucking tits, ass, fannies, you name it. <laughs> And they're like, oh my gosh. Like my dad's uncle, who's over 80, he loves my work. I'm like, really? Yeah, it's like, fuck it. Because they say to me, does he make money out of it? Like, yeah, he sells it. It's like, that's all it's about. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I never feel I never feel embarrassed of what I do. Well, really. You shouldn't. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. It's just, um, I never do. Never do. I was gonna ask though, how do you get how do you get around censorship? How do you not get zucked? Oh, I, I, you, oh, fuck, I don't know. I, I, it's a funny thing. I mean, I've probably been shadow banned. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know how I'm still online. I really don't know. It's crazy. I mean, when I when the band, of course, back to the pandemic, when that kind of kicked off, I got a lot of stuff removed, and it was kind of like, I ain't fucking going. But I just thought, you know what? I don't care. Yeah. If I go, I go. I've had a good time. But it's it's interesting to kind of see what gets removed and what doesn't. Mm. and i've noticed this especially now is the fact that before when i was drawing like nipples and like willies and stuff like mainly nipples like vaginas everything bums that it was fine it was fairly fine even says in the the guidelines you can kind of post it but not so it's like well that's no help (laughs) so i was thinking okay i'm just drawing 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 and all this stuff and then when i started to draw like erect penises it's like, ah, this is getting a bit flagged. Okay, but it's getting loads of interaction. So whatever. I don't care. Dangerous I, dance. I, I am. I'm dancing so close to the fire. I don't care. But what I've especially noticed now with Instagram, that this recent batch of drawings I've done is the fact that when you kind of get shadow banned, your stuff doesn't get shown to followers. So on the explore feature on there, um, your stuff won't be shown right so the only way you can generate followers as such is if people share stuff and that's how that kind of happens but what i've noticed especially is ever since i've done more of like trans women that's when the more people not people more of instagram be like no 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 we can't have this and it's like i've noticed that now and i just think this is so fucking stupid yeah it's it's such a weird thing so the way i get around it is the fact that I kind of just do like close-ups. So you kind of see like, oh, there's a little bit of a penis there. Oh, there's, a, <laughs> there's, a, there's a kind of a nutsack. Ah, uh, there's something there. But I always advertise it to put on like Twitter. Saying, because Twitter, anything goes on there, I've noticed. Fuck yeah, any, anything goes. I'm yeah. like, Jesus Christ. Whether so, or not that's a good thing is a different yeah, conversation. It, it, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Because if people want to see it, then do that. Because I have... In the past, I've had friends like say to me, oh, you should set up like an OnlyFans and just put your drawings on there. And I thought, yeah, but I don't really like to charge people to see my work and stuff yeah. like that. And like, I had a patron for like a day. And I thought, this just feels dirty. I ain't having this. So I just get by and by just posting it on there. I don't I don't care. I Quick honestly reminder don't. for uh, listeners to subscribe to our yeah. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, comment, subscribe, please. Yeah. Five star Google review, but that yeah, I just... three fifty a month. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see it all, there you go, <laughs> top tier. But yeah, I just, I just don't, I don't care. Like the all, I it doesn't stop me. It shouldn't stop me. I think you're at a point now though. You've got what one hundred nineteen thousand followers. Like I think you're yeah. fairly bulletproof at this point. I think that's the other thing. Is like oh, I think yeah, touch with a whistle. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I've just jinxed you. I uh, said now, but uh... yeah, I did. I think that's the thing. I think it's just. It's such a fine line. I try to draw. That's the thing. I try and draw whatever subjects I do, but I try and draw it the way that's not very overly sexual. Yeah. I think that's that's like to draw actual penetration. Sure. That's where it's like, mm, yeah, I think that's a bit too much for Instagram. 
<laughs> but, but, but not for me. I don't give a shit. But I just post it on Twitter. But I don't predominantly draw that anyway as much. Sometimes sure. I draw like the odd intercourse, but not like that. I just kind of focus more like, here's someone having a wank. There you go. And it's it's always sort of mixed up with, you know, Simpsons. And, and, yeah, um... that's it. <laughs> that's it. I've also noticed as well, you're talking about this, is the fact that even the way you word posts, sometimes they can get removed. I've really? Had... I've had cases where I've like in the past I've had I've not done like people send me their nudes. I've put like a title like solicited photos sent by two parties, both agreed, drawing. And sometimes that will flag up because of the word like solicited mm. and like sent nudes or like sent photos. So it's a real kind of fine line of like how you word things. That's why whenever I do any of my drawings, like in the past, I've never used to give them titles because I used to think that's so fucking lame to do that. But now as I've kind of gotten older, I would just like listen to a song and be like, listen to like Madonna or something and be like, oh, I'll just add one of those words in the title. That's what I'm listening to at the moment. This drawing's called that. And that's how I kind of differentiate, differentiate how, what each drawing is. And also to kind of go for another complete tangent, because this is what I always like to do. That's how I kind of defer when I sell a drawing or a print. So like people send me, or oh, can I have the drawing of um like, um oh, I don't know, like True Blue. I'm like, oh, that's a Madonna song. I know what it is. That's um, this drawing here. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. So it actually helps me out to figure out what I've done. That's so good. That's a, that's a whole other kettle of fish. I, I can never name my my drawings. Oh, I always, um, the, the way I got around it is I would have two photos and the first would be of the painting on the wall and then yeah. you'd swipe through and have the actual close-up. And I found that worked that's because it was clearly art and not... That, that's pretty good. Yeah. I like um, that. That's a pretty. But I feel so bad for um. Do you know, you know Press Love Kostov? Yes. His work is getting zucked to all hell. Um, and really? there's no, there are no bits. It's him shirtless over and over again, and like just getting constantly removed. Um, yeah, I haven't seen his work for ages on Instagram. He's he's doing a beautiful series. Um, but yeah, completely zucked. That's that's it, it, it's it's crazy because sometimes I look on like the explore feed. And I see like these videos of very suggestive kind of like TikTok style videos of like sexual innuendos. Yeah. And sometimes I, I look at that and sometimes what I see a lot of now is, is like a lot of AI art of like women with massive tits and it's like anime kind of style. And I sometimes I look at that and I feel like, really? Come on. <laughs> you know, so I'm just drawing, I'm drawing like a person who's just had top surgery. And yeah. you're flagging that as like sexual, kind of sexual imagery. And you can see like a pair of tits the size of like the moon. I, I, I'm just like, whatever. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm going to do my own thing, really. I'm like, ugh. Internet, Instagram can suck sometimes. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I mean, there's, there's, just, there's just no good way to get your art out there, is there? There isn't. And I think that is also the problem now. I feel like the good, the honey, not honey, okay, but the real sweet spot for like online posting artwork it was definitely like the tumblr days that was very fun like i still have my my original blog spot that's like when i first started to post work online but like during like the tumblr days of like 08 till oh like 2012 when i left from um, camberwell i think getting your work online was so much accessible and easy you can post whatever you want I mean, Tumblr back then was wash with like pornography and like imagery and stuff, but it was easy to kind of showcase your artwork. And I just feel like now it's just so, it's challenging. That's why I feel like anyone that kind of gets work out there, like I've had people sending messages saying, oh, how do you get prolific online? How do I do this? How do I do that? And sometimes I feel like, do you got to try? It's, yeah. I, it'd be harder to start now than it was back back in my day <laughs> but like yeah it's just it's annoying it's annoying it's annoying to be creative online i feel now yeah it's it's scary it is it's um it's it, it just feels impossible sometimes uh mm. <laughs> excuse me yeah it's just it's a nightmare it's an actual <laughs> nightmare you've you've touched on this a little bit um, but I'd be happy for you to expound a bit more. Um, so in my in my research for this episode, um, I was reading about how because of censorship, um, erotica often took 
a vaguely political form, uh, particularly in the Western tradition, um, where they would feature the likenesses of, you know, well-known politicians or local yeah. rich yeah. people to take a dig at them, or, you yeah. know, they would make fun of the people doing the censorship. And yeah. um, I, I was <laughs> yeah. wondering if if there's any political bent to your work. And, and I know you've mentioned, you know, the importance of showing trans bodies to you, but I was wondering if there, were, there was anything else you, you try to incorporate. I don't know, really, because I've always kind of admired satire artwork i've always kind of liked that i've always kind of liked the essence of like humor in making artwork i've always tried to incorporate that in my drawings to a certain degree not necessarily political like i've drawn political people as such predominantly more political people in like america because one is they've got fun faces to draw and it's very <laughs> they're, they're, they're always on the news i remember I drew like Boris Johnson and Theresa May and I felt sick afterwards and I was just like, oh, I just don't want to do this. So I think I would say there, is, there might be there might be a political kind of approach in my artwork, but I don't necessarily see that myself. Sure. It's like I just feel like now in I was actually thinking this probably the other day when I was work driving about for this interview, like this kind of like, talking about like a tr- the, the the kind of trans movement that just sounds very silly to some to some degree but it's like the trans now is so big and people kind of realizing themselves who they are and who they want to become and wanting to be happy that i feel like it's a world where everyone's involved in it to a degree everyone has an opinion everyone has right views and wrong views about trans and I feel like it's the subject now which is great to kind of inspire from and kind of make work from because I think as I said before like in my awful bio that I gave you I hate talking about myself I just don't know what I talk about but I feel like I just kind of draw and capture what's very current now and for me I see so much online of people finally being happy with themselves that I just kind of want to encapture that in paper and just kind of see that if that makes sense it's just I think it might be political it might be that maybe have some political kind of inquiries into that I never give that a thought because I always feel like sometimes when you kind of incorporate politicalness in um drawings it's always it's, it's like a subject matter it's like you're either one side or you're the not it's like when you draw religious art, it's like either this or this. It's, it's going to offend anyone. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I remember, I mean, so I was going to say, going off on a tangent, I think the sound's going to be weird there. There we go. Because I, I used to be a teacher, kind of, not very good one. And I remember there was trans students in there having in the class and just kind of seeing how they were like ignored and stuff. And this is going off on another complete tangent. I keep doing this. Um, and it's just, yeah, just seeing that and just seeing how they're being ignored. And I just felt like it just doesn't feel right back then. Where now, yeah, just, I don't know. I think I'm just going completely off subject. No, now. you're very much onto something, you know, and, and in my day job, I see this a lot too. It's the double edged yeah. sword with that visibility, right? Like you're yeah. more able to be yourself and express yourself, but that yeah. has a pushback because. Yeah of 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 how much more people are seeing you yeah um, yeah and... I, I agree I totally agree I feel like it's just it's just wonderful to kind of do do work like I think I've done so many drawings so many subjects looked at so many things I haven't had this much engagement and this kind of fun and like a, a warm fuzzy feeling in my heart of like whenever i I get a comment from someone, one of the followers that is trans, that have just had like top surgery or just taken that HRT and saying, your drawings are really good. They've really mm-hmm. helped me. I love that. I've had people say to me, they found their specific, specific significant other from drawings of my drawings. Really? Uh, That's yeah, you're doing I, a little uh, matchmaking. So yeah, I've had that. I was like, who needs to go and like dating websites? Just look at my drawings. I've had people. Well, I definitely um, need to have you draw me. Then. 
I've had people, I get this all the time, I get people, they send my drawings as like memes to like their husbands or wives and like stuff like that, which I find very funny. But like the specifically for like trans, like people coming out saying, yeah, your drawings have helped me look at my body in like a, in a sexual way, but in a, in a way where I feel comfortable. And I love that. I fucking love that. Whenever I've drawn shit in the past, where it's like I've drawn, oh, I don't know, um, famous people. It's like, oh, yeah, you've drawn uh, uh, Will Smith. Oh, that's great. Anyway, who cares? But drawing specifically stuff like that, and especially like people that are slightly overweight or people that have like a physique that's bigger, I get people saying to me, oh, I can finally see my body. I can finally mm. see this. I think it's great because you just don't see that. You just do not see that. You always it's like AI art. You, you're constantly seeing like these ideally like sing like tall, thin women, massive tits, big asses, all this stuff. You're just seeing this all the time. You're bombarded, bombarded, bombarded with crap like that. And I'm just like drawing normal people. I love <laughs> that. Just normal people. There's there's no frills, there's no this. I love drawing the stretch marks. I love drawing like veins that are on the breasts or like on the arms and stuff like that. Oh, it's just, it's just a wonderful feeling. But it's, it's quite like an antidote to pornography in a way, yeah. where I feel like pornography warps our idea of what a body is and, and, yeah. and what the, the norm is. Whereas I feel with your art, it is just life. Like it's, it's just what people are. It's the reality. Again, factual. That's, that's, that's the word that comes to mind. It's, it's, it's I, I how like bodies that. exist in the world. Yeah, I like that. I, I've always, I think that's such a good term. Like, it's just a factual. I think one of my friends, I think they said to my work, is kind of like, it's like ethical filth. <laughs> I, thought, I thought, yeah, it pretty much is. It is. It's like, it's pretty much it's just like, yeah, it's it's fine. It's just fine stuff, to be honest. I think like, when I was younger as a student, as I said before, when I've made the horrible artwork, I always kind of looked at subjects and trying to do like the perfect form, the perfect human shape and all this nonsense. And I've just gotten older, and probably because I'm getting old and decrepit myself and my body imperfections. And I just feel like, you know what? I'm just going to just draw what I see. I'm just going to draw a natural look of people and be like, yeah, this is fine. Like the amount of times people have said to me, like, oh, hopefully this is all right. Hopefully you're not, like, not offended, but like, hopefully this doesn't freak you out. And I'm like, I've seen stuff. I've seen things you don't want to see. And I've drawn them. <laughs> don't worry about. It. Don't honestly worry about my feelings. Trust me. <laughs> it's it's just it's just funny. It's just. And I think also what I also try and do with my kind of social media presence, especially on Instagram, is that I try to make it like a safe space for people. Mm. Like with the drawings, like I I want to kind of people go on that and be surprised. And be like, oh, this guy draws um, trees, food, trans, cars, um, a great big penis. Oh, he draws everything. He draws anything. And I, I like that. So you can kind of go on board, look on there and be like, oh, I, I like this. I like this. Because the amount of times people have said to me that said, oh, Ryan, I really love your food drawings. Or I really love your landscapes. You should do more of them. And like my friend rosie she's always said to me your drawings of cars and automobiles are so good and that's that i don't draw them as much but they're fun and like oh you draw horses really good i'm like i like I, that's what i like to be known more as like a person that just draws anything rather than like one kind of subject i think my favorite <laughs> this is completely just not my favorite uh drawing of yours is i sent it to my housemate the other day this um, is perfect <laughs> uh the the one of pepe the frog underneath like the the huge breast oh yeah and he has like the <laughs> shadow on his face i don't know why yeah. it tickles me so much I, I think it's really funny that's funny because that per the person i drew because they're trans themselves and I remember when it's like, a wonderful metaphor. <laughs> yeah, it's it's perfect. It's perfect. I remember when they sent me like their, their news. I haven't spoken to them for a while. Actually, I would love to talk to them again. They're they're great. They're they're funny. They're they're American, which is wow. I mean, Americans are always loud. I've, I've, they're they're great. They're great. But I remember when they sent me their news and stuff. Because whenever I draw stuff like that, like with Pepe the Frog or like weird stupid memes, because people ask me saying, "Why have you done that? Why have you added like?" this i'm like i don't know but for that drawing i remember just drawing that that particular like 
knew they said that say they sent me. And I was just drawing, I was thinking, it looks like they're looking above me. And I think I was just on Twitter at the time and I saw that this Pepe the Frog meme. I thought, yeah, that kind of worked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 that's how it happens. That sometimes you get like lying in a bottle. And I think that's why whenever I've added the Simpsons stuff into drawings, especially with Barkira and the Fingsons. Sometimes a bit erotic stuff as well, but I, I, that, I don't why you kind of do that. That's just my kind of personal taste, to be honest. Hmm. But I always feel like because the Simpsons always goes well with anything that's media. You put, you could put Simpsons in like oh, I don't know, um, EastEnders. That could work. <laughs> it just would work. It'd just be so stupid. It works. But that's when like Barkira, Barkira happened. Going off completely of a different tangent now from like erotica and tits. Do you, mind, but, do you mind just explaining to people what Barkira is? Basically, Barkira is the mixture of The Simpsons mixed in with Akira. And I mixed the two together because it's because I was stupid and young and crazy. And so the whole idea was the project for that was to have the whole Akira um, volumes be redrawn by all these artists across the world. And they're kind of released now online. And so, yeah, I was the brainchild of that kind of mashup. And that all kind of stemmed... For me, um, sitting in my bedroom floor in 2011 or 12, just drawing stuff, I wanted to make a Simpsons comic because there was a Tumblr blog back then called The Simpsons Comic Club or something like that. And I really wanted to do that. And it had like well established actually illustrators on there, which funny enough, some of them actually worked on Barkira, which is really strange. Um, I was trying to do a comic and the original idea was, because um, I'm not a comic artist myself, I'm terrible at comics, I'm shit. But the whole idea was I was going to draw Ralph Wiggum finding a dead body and only he can talk oh my to God. it. He can only talk to this body. And so they have a friendship. I thought this would really be fun. And as I was kind of thinking of the concept, I was sitting on the bedroom floor, a really hot summer's day in a pair of pants. And I looked on the floor next to my Akira volume one. And I thought this could work. So I just kind of redrew some of the panels into that, into the Simpsons characters. And I thought, this is stupid this is great it made me laugh and usually whenever i make work that makes me laugh it's successful that's like when whenever... struck gold that's really yeah, that's literally that i i whenever i laugh at any drawings even when i've drawn um like people like it it doesn't sound mean as it, as it does but even when i draw nudes and if i draw like the perfect curve of like where like the stomach or like where they've had like a top scar and I do it so simplistically. I laugh to myself thinking, that's just fucking good. <laughs> I like, I fucking nailed it. Like, I do like the curve because I love drawing hips. Hips is, if you're doing really well, it really emphasizes on the figure itself. I'm like, motherfucker, I've done this right. Here we go. Mm. But yeah, I mean, the Simpsons stuff has that. that and my recent book project, The Fingsons, is basically The Simpsons mixed in with John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, because I'm stupid and I love doing stuff like that. And the next project for that is, which I hopefully be getting back into, which isn't erotic it's whatsoever, is basically go back to doing The Simpsons, you know, the Springfield Elementary, kind of incorporate that into Battle Royale. Oh, nice, nice. So I've done the first volume. It's about 10 years old, but I might get back into doing that again. So, yes, that's that's the life story of The Simpsons and mashups. But anyway, going back to erotica and boobs and willies and stuff like that, <laughs> well I was, I was just gonna say you know i think that there's something inherently funny about sex or there should be if you're doing it, it right that's great i think that's the thing i think i try and do that like i try and incorporate stupid stuff like the one with pepe the frog yeah I there's a it's... jonathan jonathan chan um has the painting on his instagram of oh, here, I'll, I'll see if i can show it to you Oh yeah, yeah. the nuts. <laughs> it's just just a just a pair of bollocks and um... <laughs> yeah, i remember when i saw that i was like that's a great pair of balls <laughs> yeah and, and it's so funny it just made me like, like it's a wonderful painting but it also yeah. just like made me like giggle <laughs> yeah i feel like that's when work is good yeah I think it has to have a levity it, yeah and i feel like i've seen artists online there's a couple that will just paint straight up memes mm. and stuff that's very whack like now and i've done that in the past where i've drawn memes and it and memes as a subject are very hit and miss because they are what they are. They're funny for like a hot minute and go. Sure. And it's, it's kind of like a hard subject matter to keep fresh. Where you see like Jonathan's paintings there, then parabolics. It's like, yeah, this is good. This is, <laughs> this is good. This is what it should be. 
I um I, I with my penis paintings, I sold three of them to um an old uh high school friend. Well, I say friend, he wasn't very nice to me in high school, but we're very friendly now. Mm. Um and um he's put them up, he and his girlfriend have put them up in um their bathroom and i i feel like he felt like i would be a bit offended that he's put them in the bathroom (laughs) but i was like no that's perfect that's hilarious like people are gonna walk in yeah see that (laughs) i love that i think that's so funny it's it's always such a funny feeling when you see your own artwork on walls Mm. it's funny that when that whenever sometimes i get people they send me that like dm saying i've just got your print and it's great it's on my bedroom wall now i look at what, what they put up i'm like you just put a pair of tits up there. That's great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well it's great. I, I love that. I love that kind of feeling. And I think kind of going back into like the fine art aspect, like for my own kind of educational upbringing and artistic upbringing, because I've worked so long in fine art, that for me, I only really see my work in a frame or on a wall, like the kind of, or books. Books is, because I was working sketchbooks. I never really see my work as t-shirts I do it from time to time but I never feel right it feels like dirty to me because it just feels weird so I I, I always I know what I like artwork wise nice. like it looks I try and whenever I do my drawings I kind of naturally perceive them to be on a wall or in a book like I mean I, I would I would gladly wear your Pepe or like that, yeah uh, I mean I've had people like send me like there's like vid- pictures of them wearing the t-shirts and it's like the ones of like um like some words on like a phone or like one of grabbing a breast and stuff like that I'm like yeah that's weird I saw my friend <laughs> the other day and then my her sister she brought one of my t-shirts and it's the one of um Howl's Moving Castle where he's doing like the S engraving now that the s we used to do in like secondary school like oh we, yeah yeah the what is that called oh, yeah so it's a, yeah it's, it's him drawing that on the on the ground when he's doing the spell and I, I saw that picture ages ago on twitter and i thought oh, i'm gonna draw that and i made it as a to a t-shirt and she bought one and, and when i saw them the other day she was wearing it and i was like oh fuck <laughs> that must be such a strange feeling it was she even said to me oh i can change a t-shirt if i want i'm like no 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 it's fine it's not offending me i'm just like that's my drawing what the fuck is going on <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucking hell this is crazy uh i i recently i so i took the the dick paintings i did and i had them printed into stickers and i called oh, them nice. stickers um that's a fucking great name oh my god but then I just, I can't sell them anywhere because I'm so worried I'm going to lose my day job. Like, I'm so worried I'm just going to get fired. Um, <laughs> so I, I I can't even put them on, um, you know, uh, yeah. whatever, my shop online. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm I, I'm very aware that we're both sitting in complete darkness. Yeah, I and... know. I mean, it's I mean, it's now you would it's complete pitch black. I can't be bothered to reach my light. It's up there somewhere. It's uh, all right. I was gonna say uh, we've done about an hour, so I'm happy to wrap it up. But um, I've, it's been great chatting with you. And yes, um, well. where can people find you? Um, best place to find me is possibly Instagram for however long I'm going to be on there for until I'm banned completely um so like instagram.com uh, forward slash with a pencil in hand there's no spaces um twitter all, all my links are on my bio on my instagram as well so that's probably the best place to kind of find me i mean yeah i'm usually on that all the time that's where i post all my artwork uh yeah if you want to see more pepe stuff boobs you name it it's on there yeah. <laughs> great uh well i hope everyone uh enjoyed listening um if you would like to support the podcast please subscribe um also we have a crowdfunder for some equipment so that i sound slightly less terrible in future episodes so please give to that if you can and would like to uh but thank you so much for joining us ryan and uh hope to see you soon yes thank you very much great thank you.